let's jump right in it. This is Web Mapping from Scratch Part 2. If you haven't seen the first one, I would go watch that first uh, so you won't be totally lost. Um, this will work out a lot better for you if you make the video resolution and size as big as you can so you can read the code. Now, where were we last time? We were like, uh, like right there, where basically we had a wireframe layout, header, footer, sidebar, map. You know, you, we were geocoding, we were adding a marker, we were pulling up a info window. What we need to do today is we need to upload some data into fusion tables, and we'll do that. We'll add that layer to the map. We will perform a spatial query on that layer, and then we will style the whole thing up so it'll look pretty. So let's get started. Uh, first thing we need to do is put some data in fusion tables. Just pick out any old polygon layer you have laying around. The easiest way I found to do this is the easiest way to get it up there is by a KML, and the easiest way to make that I found is QGIS. If you haven't used QGIS before, it is an awesome open source desktop GIS. I probably use this 80-90% of the time now. When I need to do something, do serious GIS stuff. I've got a Postgres server local here, and we're going to grab that layer. Uh, Yep, we're going to grab that layer. Now all that's in here is this field we want is the crap. That's the crap we're interested in. That is the crap our citizens want to know. They want to be able to key in our address, figure out their crap value, and go, oh crap, it's 84. This is not good. So that's what we're interested in. Now to convert this to KML, you want to make sure of two things. You want to make sure your uh, layer knows what projection it's in. In this case it does, 2264 net 83 North Carolina feet. Screw you metric system! And then we need to make sure our project, our display window knows what projection, it, that it's in the same projection. Right now you see it's the default EPSG 4326, you know, spherical world lat long blah blah blah. So, and this, this might be in a different place in your version of QGIS, I'm using it nightly and they kind of move this around. Go to Project Properties and just set it to whatever the projection your layer is. Say North Carolina feet 2264. Screw your metric system. You'll see it'll sit there and hum for a second. So, did we get that? We get that? Yep, 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 yep. So now we're going to right click and go Save As. And we're going to pick KML, Keyhole Markup Language. We'll give it a location. We'll go uh, demo layer. And we want to change this from the original CRS to Google Mercator 900913. That is the, the one true projection. And then OK. Off it goes. It's been exported. We can go over and see do, 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 do. What did our account call it? Demo layer. And there's our file. So that was quick. You notice we didn't do any styling here beforehand. We're going to handle all that in Fusion Tables. So let's go to Fusion Tables. Google Fusion Tables. Now, if you haven't made a login here at Fusion Tables before, it'll ask you to make a login or log in with your Google ID. So do that first. And a uh, little side note, this screen does not like uh, your uh, ad block. Hint, hint. So here we see a list of other layers are uploaded. What we're gonna do is say new table, import table, we're going to choose File. Ooh, look at all the icons. I didn't make these. Those are those are made by smart people. Uh, workspace demo layer. There's our KML. You can see you can upload CSV, DSV, TXT, or KML. Next, 
and you see it's uploading down here look at it go 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 mi connection you guys are awesome oh, it's gonna crunch off for a minute this is the part where you'd normally play elevator music see it sees uh, basically here's our stuff description name it always puts those columns on there automatically you can take them off if you want GID the crap that's what we want and you can change the table name we'll just call it demo layer you can make a allow export attribute the data to page link imported you can description you can put all that stuff in if you want finish and here's our layer and you see these are blank because we didn't have anything there GID here's the crap KML now we need to style how this is going to look in a map. Let's go visualize map. And sometimes you get this with fusion tables. It'll say like uh, still loading tiles the first time you see it. It's a little weird. Okay, red. Not pretty. Let's uh, configure styles. We are going to do fill color Tell you what, let's do a gradient and we'll do that the crap thing. Zero through a hundred will just be various shades of green. See what that looks like. That's pretty. Don't know that means anything for this data. I randomly generated the crap to be zero through a hundred. And that actually looks pretty good. Let's go to uh, configure info window by default. It's just going to throw up everything in that table except for like the geometry. Let's configure that to be custom. Let's do uh, what do you want to do here? Let's do give it a big H3 and say this is your crap value. And then we will just put in we don't even have to tell them that's what it is because we just told them that it is an H3. The crap. We can even make that strong so it's bold. Hmm. Think that's going to work? Let's find out. This is your crap value 69. Wow. I just picked that number out of that. So that's all styled. Our map is ready to go. Now, what you want to do now, well, share, make this public. Always make everything public unless you have a reason not to. Share, share, share. Plus, this is going to make it work in our app, which is good too. So, it's made public. We got an info window. We got a shading. Now, see this number up here? That's the number you're interested in. That is the unique ID for this particular layer. So, we're going to copy that and let's go to the code boop, 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 boop. komodo edit i've got our index html and our script and our styles let's go to script let's go where we are initializing the map actually we're going to make this a variable var table id equals we're just going to give it that number don't need a quote there got another new keyboard i like this one better uh, right, 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 right. Let's see. We want to add a map there. Let's go layer equals new Google dot maps dot fusion. You can find this in the the maps API. Fusion tables layer and let's see give it a query query no brackety brackety select select say geometry from and say table id Mm, 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 mm. 
layer.set map and our map. Could it be that easy? Woohoo! Could it be that easy? Aha! Uh -huh. Whoa! That easy. We just took a layer, we pushed it up to, and I quote here, the cloud, styled it, styled our info window, and added it to our map just like that. Did that take very long? I don't think so. So we've got that there. Let me look at that code again. I wonder if we could just put the table ID in there. Trail X table ID. I don't think we really need to run a query. No, we don't need to run a query. So forget what I just said in that. All you need is the table ID. Bam, Bob's your uncle. So we've got a layer in there. What do we need to do now? What do we need to do? What we need to do now is our spatial query. We are going to query that layer. So when we geocode, we're going to name XY. We're going to take that XY, overlay it on the polygons, and figure out what our crap value is. Just like that. Now, how are we going to do that? That is, that is a great question. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to, have to make a function for that. Say function uh, perform intersection and we'll pass it the, the lat long longitude okay and we are going to use a little jQuery uh, uh, we're gonna use some jQuery Ajax stuff we're gonna do a get JSON now our URL for this query, we're going to use the Fusion Table Table SQL API. So the URL is like https wgoogle.com slash fusion tables. Very easy to remember. API query. Not weary. Query. Question mark. And here you're just basically writing some SQL, some mostly SQL. We're going to do select the crap from, and here we're going to put in our table ID. Um, table ID where st underscore intersects. Now you can't do an intersection with a point with the SQL API. You have to use like a circle or a box. But you can give your point, you make a circle with a radius of one, one meter, like three feet. Basically a point, if your data is more accurate than that, you probably shouldn't be using fusion table data. Where ST intersects, we'll do the geometry. That's the geometry of our our layer. You might have noticed there's a geometry column. That's where that is. Geometry, and we're going to make a, a circle. Let long. Here's where we'll put in our lat and our. Got to put a comma between them. Plus long eh, plus oh, oh it's embarrassing to remember all this. Let long and give it a radius of one and then you know what we need to do? We need to give it a JSON callback. That's gonna return it as JSON as a function, so we don't have to worry about cross-site scripting. Your browser is going, no, I'm not going to read that. JSON callback equals, we're going to put in a question mark. Normally that would screw you. But since we're using jQuery's uh, get JSON function here in a second, that will actually, jQuery will put its own just kind of random number in there, will allow us to handle the function right within the AJAX call and not make a separate function with that name. I don't know if that made sense, but get JSON 
We give it that URL. And when it gets to the JSON, it's going to go function. We're just going to call the return data. And bracket, bracket. Now, things to remember. When you do an AJAX request, it is asynchronous with the page. That means while it's running this code, it's going to keep on going and running code, keep running code below it too. Just a thing to know because that'll screw you up. If you're not used to asynchronous programming, you're used to things going like on a .NET page from the top to the bottom in order. Things run asynchronously. They run out of step with the rest of the program. So if you're setting a variable here, and you run some code with that variable down here, it's probably not going to have that variable set yet because it's running that code down there before this data is even retrieved and processed. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. We got this data. I'll tell you what. Let's just take a look at it so you see what that looks like. Hopefully this is going to work. I didn't just botch this. Let's go control shift I over to console, console in, whoa, whoa, oh, okay. Gnome shell is a little bit buggy sometimes on Ubuntu. Okay, let's see what this does. Enter an address, 700 North Tryon Street, Charlotte. Oh, we're not calling this, are we? <laughs> see let's do not an initialized map it's actually going to be when it codes address that's where we're in our coordinates we're going to go hmm, let's see we'll go we'll go perform intersection and it needs a lat and a lawn and I believe that is results Remember, we're getting our first result, zero dot geometry dot location dot lat. And the same thing with LNG at the end. But Google does not like LON, it likes LNG. I like LON. Yeah. Okay, try that. Mm -hmm. Centered North Tryon Charlotte. See, it returned this object. Holy crap! All that code worked on the first try. It makes it returns everything in this table object, and there will be columns, which are your columns, and it'll it'll be an integer, like zero through how many columns you have, and the name of the column. Then you'll have rows. That'll be zero. It'll be an array of rows. So you've got run row and the value of the, the crap value there is 31. Let's test that. Yep, 31. So, outstanding. We're, we're, we're doing good things here, folks. Let's go back to our perform intersection. Of course, not everybody's going to go look at their JavaScript log for this. So let's go back on our index.htm. And in that aside, let's put in a container div id equals search results and then there's just nothing in there right now when the site loads we're going to go let's go well actually let's do two things here let's say we want to make sure that it actually returns something so we'll go if, remember our format, uh, data.tables.rows, that was the rows returns, dot length. This is going to get the number of rows returned. If that's greater than zero, we know we got results. Happy day. Uh, else, we know it didn't get results. Sad day. We have happy day. Let's take uh, that thing we just made. Search results and set the HTML, the inner HTML, 
to see do an H three maybe your crap value and then we will stick in the value it returned and that's going to be data dot table dot rows and remember rows is an array so we want to get the first one and we also want to get the first uh, column in that array and there's only one column remember these things start from number zero now if it didn't find anything we'll go search results uh, no records found damn let's take that out Gotta be careful when you put in swear words in your code for testing, because if you forget them when they go live, eh, it's not good. Okay. And we can, yeah, we took that console log out. So we'll go address 5501 Ruth Drive Charlotte. Oh, I cannot read property of rows of undefined. All right, see what we got. Oh, singular. This is the part where everybody at home goes, Tobin, you moron. I've been staring at that for five minutes. Okay, 700 North Tryon Street, Charlotte. Your crap value is 31. Congratulations, that is a low crap value. Look at that, look at that. We got, uh, we got layout, wireframe, we're geocoding, we're Zooming in, we're adding a marker. We already had a map. We're adding our fusion tables layer. We're doing a spatial query on that layer to determine what our crap value is. Crap value could be anything. Could be your voting precinct. Could be your volunteer fire department district. Could be your solid waste collection zone. Could be your police district. Could be your census tract. Could be anything. This is a very, very common query you have to do when you're running these types of apps. So our functionality is done. Now, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? Well, here's what we need to do. This is ugly. Let's fix this. First thing I want to fix is our map. And you're saying, Tobin, this is, why would you fix this? Because of a couple things. First, when you're developing an app, my general rule is if there's not a good reason for something to be in there, you should take it out absolutely take it out and here we don't need to do street view we don't need to switch to satellite views we don't need to do any of that so let's go up where we initialize our map and we set our options and again this is all in the the docs let's say map i think it's map type control false we're going to take the map type control and uh Street view. I think it's camel cased like this. So let's try that. See what that did. Okay, it cleaned up our map interface a little bit. Second thing, in Google Maps version three, you can actually style the Google Map itself, and you should really do that in an application like this. The reason is. Google Maps is very bright it's meant to be the only thing on there and you really want to keep your focus on your particular fusion tables layer so there's different ways to do that there's actually a good example uh, let's see I think I bookmarked that yeah and this and I'll, I'll put these different sources I'm using I'll put all these links in the show notes there's these fusion table layer examples with Google Maps. There's a, go to the advanced one here. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, see how this is all styled differently, light gray, so it makes a very big emphasis on the, the fusion table layer. I like that. If you look down through their code, they have like a, uh, styled map function and we're just going to rip that whole thing off 
Control C, go back to our code. Remember, steal, steal, steal. B, it's going to style our map. Since we named our map, what Google always names its map, it's really easy to just swipe code straight in and not have to change variables. So I advise doing that if at all possible. And I think that is just called in the map initialization. I think we can just call style map and we got it. So map initialization, style map. Look at that. We have put a total focus now on our fusion table. Now that is very, very good. There's another site uh, that has a lot of different examples on pre-made styles. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember where it is. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Uh, yeah, I'll put a link to that in the show notes. They have a lot of different style examples. They also have a site where you can kind of build your own styles. So there's a lot of different ways you can do that. Now we've got our map styled up. Let's style up the rest of our page. And now we're leaving the GIS world and just going into plain old website design. I usually like to start at the top and the bottom and then work the middle. Let's start with the header. Now there is a Google Fonts Library. Best way to get a good looking header font I found is the Google Web Fonts Library. You can go pick a font you like. Um, uh, Dan, it could really be anything here. Uh, what's a good one? Let's pick something that's a little thicker. Uh, what do you think? Terminal doses? Kind of dorky, but we'll try it. Let's see, quick use. It is going to give you. We'll just take the extra bold. Thank you. It'll give you this code to add to your website. This is a CSS link. So copy that. Paste it in your index.htm right before you do your style CSS. Terminal doses. And then there's what we want to make our font family for that header h1 tag. Let's go to we even have a header h1 tag here. Header, we're in our style sheet, h1. Put in our font family of terminal doses, fall back to sans serif. These fonts will work in Internet Explorer 6. They, they work pretty much anywhere. And font size, we'll give it, you know, something big, 40 pixels. And let's even give it a drop shadow. Let's go. Uh, text shadow yeah, I don't know three picks three picks six picks and uh, 40 40 40 is like a a darker kind of gray black Let's see what that did oh look at that that's pretty error you know what else we should do we should go to style our header Float that in the middle. So we're going to header text align go center and mm, 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 mm. let's also we know this site isn't called header anymore. We know it's called my cool site. Yep, cap, cap, cap. So we got my cool site in the middle here. Neat font, little drop shadow. One of the things I should say about this layout I'm making here, zero images involved. So you don't have to use images in your site layout. And that'll help you in download speed, especially when you're at people pulling this up over like a 3G connection. Helps a lot. Let's give this a background gradient. What I like to do for that is, there's a, 
It's like CSS3 gradient generator. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Kind of like this ultimate one. It gives you a bunch of examples. And there's examples with things like lens flare and things that go to transparent and weird stuff. A lot of different colors. You can make your own by dragging this stuff around. Uh, blue is always a safe color. Everyone seems to like blue, so let's not do that. Ooh, ugly, ugly. Kind of like that. Let's try that. So we're going to copy this code. And we're going to put it in our style sheet right for the header. Now, my general rule of thumb when I'm writing CSS, if there's not a whole lot of attributes there for an element, I'll put them in line. If there's a bunch, I'll do this, you know, stack them out to the side. Here we have a bunch. What this did, it gives a default background for really old Internet Explorer. And then it gives the, the CSS standard uh, way to declare a linear gradient, and then all these different browser flags. And it even gives you this filter DX image uh, unholy thing, Microsoft's version of gradient stuff. So, boo, 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 boo. oh, see that, see that? That is a header sizing margin problem. Let's do header height. Let's do like 120 pixels maybe. Let's do that header H1. We'll take away the margin and add some padding instead. Padding, give it a top and bottom padding of 20 pixels. There we go. Yeah, kind of, ooh, see how that green goes with that green, that green, that green, that green, that green. See, that is what you call color coordination. Now, if you're bad at colors, like I am, I recommend going to a site called Color Lovers, with color misspelled, they must be British. And it will give you all these different color palettes and colors you can pick from. Browse palettes, and you can sort by most loved and most viewed and you can get a color palette for a website because uh, I've been to a lot of GIS conferences I've seen the way you dress we're not very good at picking up colors so go get help for that kind of stuff here this is going to be very simple so I'm not really going to use that so now we've got a header I tell you what in our header you usually have some navigation links let's put that in there too so our header, now navigation, there's actually a nav tag in HTML5, which is cool. Let's put in unordered list, li. This is where you'd use Zen coding to do that. This is real quick, but I don't want to get too complicated here. Link one. Those would be fake links. Link two, link three, three. In our footer, we've got where it just says, oh, we'll do footer link. Got our nav. Now this is going to do a bad thing. Oh, stacked, not good, not good. So let's go style that nav up. <laughs> let's do header nav and the reason I don't just do nav is we might want to put additional navigation in the footer or something else and we might want to style that differently Let's see nav we'll do text align left we'll do we need to make it uh, let's give it a background color this will be a block level element so it should go the whole whole width background let's do something blackish now when I'm doing if you're looking for a shade of gray and you don't you don't speak hex easiest way to do that is go red green blue and then need three numbers here 
255, 255, 255 is white, 000, zero, zero is black. So basically what you're doing is, as long as you keep the numbers the same, they will be a shade of, you know, monochrome, somewhere between black and white. Background, okay, mm, okay. Do we need to do anything else with this? Uh, uh, see what that does. Oh, it's actually bigger than the height we set for the header now. So that's not cool. But that's partly because the navigation is our on our list is going vertically. So let's fix that and see see how much that helps. Let's do header nav unordered list and let's give that a list style of none. Let's give it say let's get the margin off of it. Margin zero and for our header nav ul li elements we want those to display in line and make sure you can see them color white that should go good on that dark background and let's see what that does okay okay look we got a we, we got a, we got a link here it's not very pretty let's say give these a left padding so they are not right up on each other's faces for the li let's give the ul a top and bottom padding say padding let's see give it a i don't know let's see what that does oh that looks good we're still going bigger than the size of our header here so let's make that header a little bigger that's going to extend past there let's make it a little smaller yeah that's good we got a header i tell you what let's let's make do a little fancy for the header, let's give it a let's give it a box shadow. Let's give it a tight one. Say zero three picks and three picks diffusion and that same kind of dark color. Let's make it stand off a little bit. There we go, a little shadow there. Now let's take, this stuff is in our main, so let's push that down a little bit. Let's see, main padding, padding, I just need a top padding. Top 30 pixels, push that down. There we go, pretty, pretty. It's a little too far, but we're going to do something else with that. Now our footer, that's it's not a bad looking header. Our footer, let's go let's text align it to the center. Let's give it a fall small font size. Size 10 pixels. And let's see. Let's give a little top padding. Top and bottom padding, we'll say. Padding 25, 25 pixels, nothing left or right. Mm. Let's give it a, a lighter color. And this is just the hex I have memorized. It's like 858585. Oh, there's a nice light little footer right in the middle. Tell you what, on our main, let's push the bottom down a bit. Margin 
say 28 pixels to give us a little space at the bottom of the page. Uh, not main, uh, container. We want that in container. Oh, X. That here. And this is how I style sites. It's basically refreshing your browser screen a few thousand times. And you'll get it. So now we got a footer styled okay. Not a little too much. Tell you what, let's uh, make that bottom padding on the footer a little smaller. Yeah, that looks good. Now the search. Let's do something with the search. This is the search here is the most important thing on the site. It's how you're gonna find out your crap. So we want to make that just basically grab a user by the face and pull it right into the monitor. This little thing here does not do that. So let's go back to index. And here's our search. Let's take this out of here. We'll put it in our main before the aside so it'll be right there. We're actually going to put that in its own div, I think. Div ID equals search div. You see, I'm very creative. Search div. Let's take out that submit button. So it's just enter address. And now it's going to be search div. Let's make a search div. Put it back in the center again. And what else you want to do to it? Yeah. It's gonna put it right up in the middle there. Not very pretty. Let's give it a bottom margin. Margin. Twenty-five pixels, is that too much? Hmm. Get a 15 pixel margin. And since this is going in between our content, our main, and the rest of our stuff, we can probably just take that out. Yep, yeah, right there. Now let's make it yell at people. How are we going to do that? We're going to style it. Let's do what do we call a thing. Was it address? Address address and let's see let's give it a width of monster a big font size uh, let's give it a border radius for funsies let's see two pixels maybe let's give it a little padding Top and bottom, four pixel, left and right, eh, 10 pixels. Just like that, we have a monstrous enter address thing here. We can do even better. How we're going to do that is through CSS transitions. CSS transition is basically an animation you do in CSS. It's supported by WebKit browsers like Chrome and Safari and Firefox and Opera. And should be, it might be supported by like IE10 when it comes out. And the format will do the, is just transition. Let's see, we're going to transition everything. That's just easy. Oh, what am I doing? Transition. Go all. Give it a time length, say 500 milliseconds, and ease in out. Now, this won't work because that is the standard CSS way to do it, and no one really does it that way yet. So you've got to give it these little browser arguments. Come here, like uh, 
the web web kit for all the web kitty stuff uh, it's a moz for all the firefoxy stuff and opera for both of you and let's see we've got that uh, let's give it a border say two picks solid <laughs> two picks solid and oh handy little tool for you let's make it green to match our theme here there's a Chrome extension called Pendule that has a whole bunch of neat little web designer stuff. Over miscellaneous, you can get a display color picker. Let's get this darkest green here. Copy that. And I'll tell you what, let's give this a bigger border radius so it's more pronounced. So we get like six. Now, this is, has a transition to it, but it's not doing anything. So let's go address focus. And here, what we can do is make it bigger. We'll grow it. Say 550 pixels. We will make it. Uh, hmm. Do, 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 do. Actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to use that green down here. We're going to go, let's see, we're going to go border color. We're going to give it that color. And let's give it a glow. We'll do box shadow. And we'll do zero, zero. So it's kind of a glow. And give it say like 10 pixels and give it that same color. And up here, let's keep it like a gray. So now, see a rounded corner is great. We click in there, look, it grows and it glows a bright green. Hey, pretty neat. All through CSS. Now, for old Internet Explorer, it will basically stay the same size or it'll snap open without bigger without that transition. A lot of these CSS3 things degrade really well. So like that or this this border, the shadow here, all that happens in an old version of IE is that you don't see the shadow. So it's everything's still cool. Now we've styled up our search, our footer, our header. Tell you what, let's style up this page itself, the whole container. Let's give that kind of a 3D coming out of the page thing that seems really popular these days. Let's do container. Let's give it a box shadow. And hmm, let's give it like a dark kind of thing. Glowing so we're not going to offset it. Make it a big glow. And give it a really dark almost black again if you don't know the hex offhand for grayscale you can just do rgb something and let's give it some curves on the bottom let's say border radius nothing on the top and on the bottom say uh 10 picks 10 picks let's see what we got Look at that your page now is kind of uh, offset. It's glowing. It's got a rounded bottom. Looks pretty nice. We just have one more thing to do, I'd say, and we'll call it done. This, you know, this thing sitting here saying side is not very helpful. That's where you would have, you know, welcome to my cool site maybe a paragraph under it here are some directions and pleasant trees and you see we've got the text running right up here I actually did something I'm gonna fix last time I think we made this a side and the map 
uh, percentages. Eh, let's now after I thought about it for a while, I thought that's probably not a good idea. Let's do like 250 pixels for that aside, and let's do. See, it's 960 wide, so let's do. 960 minus 250 is 987, 710. Let's do 700 pixels. See what that does. Now that you have the shadow, it's going to imply a border on your content there. So you can actually take that border off. I don't know if you can see it right now, but there's a tiny little one pixel border there that's just pissing me off. So go like that. Now we've got our stuff. We need to add some padding to that aside. So that text is right not not right on our board here. So we'll go padding and we'll go top zero, left, right, say eight pixels. I just make these numbers up. Oh, that makes our stuff too big. Let's go to Uh, 690 maybe. There we go. Now we've got my cool site. We have a green theme here. It's all styled and glowing background. And, uh, oh, I know about the technology showcase. Let me look. Let's see. Tell you what. Yeah, where it says footer, we'll go Creative Commons 4.0 or whatever. It's not that Creative Commons isn't out yet. Let me put whatever we got there. And let's key an address uh, 700 North Tryon Street, Charlotte. And it zooms in. There's our marker. There's our crab value. So you've got a working site styled up good enough where you could put it out there and not be totally embarrassed. We've maybe spent hour, hour and a half on this whole thing. We've made a wireframe, we've added all our content, we made a map, we geocoded, we uploaded fusion tables, styled it up, we did you know spatial query, everything just like that. So this is kind of web mapping 101 when people bring me projects like this and I turn it around and it's usually a couple hours because you know I spin around on my chair a lot when I'm not screen casting. Uh, people wonder how, how you do that so quick. One is you steal code right and left. Two is you just get a feel for this stuff after a little while. And three, we just relied on Google to do 99% of the back breaking server killing work for us. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll be back next month, and I have no idea what I'll talk about. So see you then.